Today I'm going to be doing a review of the TS100. There are already plenty of videos out there about the TS100, but hey, why not one more? Yeah, I watched quite a few of them already. I have a couple of soldering irons, but the one I use all the time eventually will die one day. Remember when Radio Shack went out of business and closed a lot of their stores? Well, the source in my location replaced them. A year or so later, I purchased this soldering iron, and I've been using it since. I'm not sure how long this is going to last. It could be years from now. However, I need a backup and a good one too. So I headed onto a Facebook group and asked if anybody knew of a good soldering iron that's not a soldering station and has different soldering tips and most importantly, not a piece of crap. Well, a couple convinced me on getting the TS100, so that's exactly what I did. I purchased one. So I purchased mine from eBay, and I bought the power adapter from Banggood. The power adapter has a barrel jack, goes from 9 volts to 24 volts, 3 amp DC, which is perfect for the soldering iron. I'm not sure about the cord, if it'll burn or not, but it is a little bit stiff. However, if you really wanted to, you could chop off the cord and put something else onto it. The power adapter accuracy is off just by a little bit, but not too bad. It really doesn't matter for the soldering iron, though. I have noticed an issue with the Allen key that comes with the soldering iron. It doesn't seem to fit all the screws. They don't even fit in there. Oh, that one almost grabbed. So, time to go to my toolbox. That one seems to be a lot tighter. There we are. Can't take that out. Take that one out. Will you work on that one? Oh yeah, it works on that. Where are these screws? Okay, so these ones will fit this, but the other two that were on here don't. Well, that's just silly. So I guess I'll be just using these two, and then the original ones that were on here are going back in the bag. It's really not that big of a deal if you got the tools to get the job done. When I first gripped the soldering iron, I kind of thought it was a little bit small in my hand. Wow, that thing's tiny. I'm used to big soldering irons, not, not something like this. You can almost hold it with your pinkies and do some soldering with your pinkies. This thing's puny. Hopefully it doesn't get hot there because I can see me touching that by accident. I'm used to my larger soldering iron. When I first plugged it in, it was stuck in DFU 3.45. Is there a button you have to hit? Ah, huh, there we are. The hell is DFU? Version 3.45? What does DFU stand for? At the time, I wasn't really sure what that meant, so I checked the booklet and apparently it wanted me to download the latest firmware. So instead of doing that, I just put the soldering iron away for now and I came back to it a couple of weeks later. Two weeks later, I was getting the TS100 ready, the DFU screen disappeared, and the soldering iron started to work. So it was time to get the custom firmware onto the TS100. So I have made a bit of a tutorial step here on the right hand side, which I'll probably put in the description. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the firmware and then we're going to create a logo for the TS100 using uh, the software that this fella has made. So we're going to click on TS100. We are going to look for the current release. So let's click on 51 releases here. And I think the last that's not beta is this one right here for me. And we are going to look for English. So EN is English, and it's going to be a hex file. So these are all different languages here. I just want English, and we're going to save this. All right. And now we are going to look for the application, which is the logo editor executable here, which is found on version 202. So let's find version 202. There's 206, 205, 204, 202 right here. So let's click on asset. There it is. Let's click on it. And let's save that as well. Okay. 
So I have uh, made a couple of projects already here. I'm not really sure if this is overkill or not, but uh, we do have a limit. Uh, we got to make sure our PNG or BMP is 96 pixels by 16 pixels. It has to be white or black. This is what we're going to use in order to inject into the logo editor, which will create a logo.hex file. I'm not really sure if the name logo means anything. I don't think it really does as long as it's a hex file, but just keep it as logo anyway. So this is what I have made already. Uh, kind of made a soldering iron here. It's not perfect, but uh, yeah, hopefully this will actually do and it'll look really nice. So I'm going to actually save this as a PNG and call it logo and change that to PNG. This is Snagit, by the way. You can use Photoshop or other online tools. So that's it. Now... This is what we have here, the TS100, the logo editor, and my logo.png. As you can see, it's extremely tiny. I'm going to click on the logo editor, and we're going to load that image. All right, so here it is. I'm going to save a DFU file, which is a hex. Uh, if you want, you can invert it, as you can see, but I've already made sure that's how I want it to be. So we're just going to call it logo as well and i'll just save and you'll see it pop up here that's it i can close this now so there's only two things that need to go to the ts100 these two right here so we want to put the custom on there and then the logo after i copied some of this uh from the wiki on that page which uh if you are using linux or others i would recommend clicking on the wiki and going to upgrading firmware and it tells you right here, we've got Windows, Mac, Linux, and just other ways how to install it. And there's quite a few other things in here, like the logo editor, which tells you a bit more information. So I'm not quite sure how well this thing's going to work. First, I just want to test it with its uh, original firmware before I dump this on here. So we're going to have a look at the firmware on this thing. Version 2.18. It's telling me to press the A button to start it, but we're not doing that yet. I'm going to click this. We are at 18 volts. Uh, that thing says 19, but it's incorrect. It's close, but not that great. So we have factory reset, WK temp, STB temp. What else is in here? Sleep time for when I... Oh, and idle time. Okay. So 360 is what? Three minutes? Thing. I, I can't think right now, but hand, right hand, left hand, and that's it. There's really nothing in here. Let's start this thing up. Now I'll push it. I'm going to start in smoke. You can see it coming right off of it. Well, that really wasn't much at all. It's already at 300. Really? Yeah. Okay. It says it's staying up at that temp, but okay, we can change it by holding it down. I guess you just got to wait for it to back to normal. Yeah. So what's it go up to? 400 is max. I think the other one is 450. So what we're going to do is hold A. Plug this in and should bring up the Windows Explorer. For some reason, this one is using micro B. I thought it was USB C by now, but okay, whatever. Uh, this here is actually just off of my Logitech mouse here. Yeah, the G903. Since it's already plugged in, I might as well just use that, right? All right, I'm gonna hold A, plug it in. Depending on what direction it goes first. There we go. This is DFU 3.45. There it is. So what we're going to do here is we're going to drop the firmware first. Just drag and drop it. All right, it says it's RDY. That means it's correct. If it doesn't say RDY, then there's an issue with it, as you can see right here. Um, error or not. So that's done. I will unplug it, and I will confirm that it's working. So let's plug it on in and see if the firmware changed. Settings were reset. Okay. Yeah, there it is. Completely different firmware. 
power source, soldering settings. Either way, we know that it works. So I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to plug the cable back in while holding A because we want to bring up that Explorer window again. So I'm holding A and putting in the cord now. DFU mode again. We can let go. And now let's grab logo and drop it in here as well. There it is. It says RDY. It's ready. And so let's close this. Unplug it and go back to all right i'm kind of curious to see what my logo looks like on here there it is distractedburn.com so i can get rid of this to display the voltage and everything all i have to do is just go into the advanced settings or advanced options and enable detailed idle screen we can also add it on the solder if we really want it but we'll just keep that off now and we can calibrate but i have nothing to calibrate it so yeah there we go tip right and input so start up the tip so you can see it starts up pretty quick um yeah we can adjust it from here let's see how far it'll actually go now so yeah 450 so 300 is what i want that's to start it Push both of them to stop it. It's going back down. And then the menu settings. Advanced options. Let's enable it. So it's stuck to 30 watt right now. Just fine. I can change that if I really wanted. Advanced. Power details. We want it on the solder screen as well. There we go. Let's start it up. As you see, tips rising. Push both of them to stop it. Now it's going back down. I really like the idea of having the custom logo. In my website review, I will post everything about this soldering iron, including my logo if you want it. I have made a video out already using the soldering iron for the first real use. And also the first time me burning myself with it. Uh, oh, frick. I touched that. Mm, first time I burnt myself on that soldering iron. Gee. I actually started to fall in love with it. At the end of that video, I talked a little bit about the solder iron, but I cut a lot of it out. So I wanted to share what I actually said at the ending of that video for this video. Well, after making this tree and testing out the soldering iron for the first time, I'm very, very pleased with it. It works really well. I, I didn't expect it to work this well. Um, I didn't like the idea that this was extremely small where it doesn't have that much mass on order to heat up things properly, but it seemed to work pretty well. Although I just used it for this tiny little tree here. Uh, time will tell how well this thing really will work. I like where I can have my own custom logo on here. That's super awesome. I guess it sits fairly well in this little turd. I, I don't like this. I wanted to try to get away from that, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, this adapter here, I didn't really talk about it much. It held out. It was a little bit warm, but that's to be expected. It's got a barrel jack on it. I don't know if this um, will actually burn if you touch it. But um, yeah, uh, I am very, very pleased with it. Uh, this tip here is the TSB2. That's this tip right here. I came with the soldering iron. This one that I bought is the chronicle tip it's the pointed one the tsi i wanted to get all the others but i just can't find the originals i could find knockoff versions but i want to find the originals for this by miniware yeah if i do get a hold of them i also want to get a case for it too and so i haven't always put it back in that box there i can have an improper case I eventually want to get a temperature detector tester and check all my soldering irons, including this one. That will be for another video though. Since my TS100 did not come with a soldering stand, I used the one that my pencil soldering iron came with. I hate these things. They slide around all over the place and your soldering iron will end up on the floor. That's why I purchased this one a year ago. However, it doesn't work for this soldering iron because it's too small. So, I made two types. Now this stuff has many names like Steel Tech, 
mechano, canic animal, and so on. I just call it steel tech as that's what I used to have when I was a kid. Anywho, I hope you guys like this review. I will be making more videos using the solder iron. I think this might be my primary solder iron now. I really love it. And I do want to eventually get back to this thing when I actually do a temperature test and get the uh, temperature reader and all that. I purchased the case for it too. So I'm eventually going to come back to this and just talk about it even more over time. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Please do rate, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.